Hello people and welcome to this new class in where we are going to talk about the rulers and the guides. As you can see on the screen, we have a document already open. It's the same we worked with in the last class. So a part of our bleed around the paper, our margins in the interior of the paper, we can see two geometries, one rectangle and one circle. Let's start talking about the rulers. The shortcut is Ctrl R or Command R in a Mac. Now they are sewn, but I can hide them using this shortcut. Ctrl R and they disappear. Ctrl R or Command R and here we are again. This is the same as if we move over View, one click, Hide Rulers. Shortcut Ctrl R. We can also click right button and click Hide rulers. More things. If we hover over the rulers, right click, then we already know that we can change the units. Now we are working in centimeters, let's say inches. They are already changed, but just in this horizontal ruler. The vertical one didn't change at the same time. We should repeat the process. Right click, and then change into inches. Time to jump to the guides because rulers and guides are in some way connected. If I hover over the ruler and then I click and drag, then a guide appears, right? I can place it wherever I want. And as you can see, there is a kind of label, interactive label displaying the exact measurement. In this case, in the vertical dimension. So this guide right now is four inches far from the origin. I leave it here and notice that when we talk about the origin, I am referring to this corner, the upper left corner of the paper, exactly this point. Furthermore, in the control bar, we can easily change the position of that guide increasing or decreasing that distance along the y-axis. One trick here, if I press shift while I click the increase arrow, then I will make bigger increments. Five is okay. Left click outside of the guide. It is not selected anymore and the control bar changes again. Let's repeat this process, but this time I will hover over the vertical ruler, click and drag, and I will place my guide, for instance, here. As soon as I drop it, it is still selected. We can check it because it is in this blue color, different than this cyan of the horizontal guide. And then we can still change the position of that guide using the control bar. Let's do it. This time I will type in the position, for example, two inches, enter. The guide is already moved to the new position, two inches from the origin. I remind you that the origin is this upper left corner of the paper. One click outside, the guide is not selected anymore and control bar changes again. Notice that the horizontal guide is crossing the paper and the pasteboard too, right? On the other hand, the vertical guide is just crossing the paper, but not the pasteboard. That is because when we use a guide and then I will use another one, click and drag, I can move the mouse and drop the guide inside the paper and in this case, the guide will be constrained into the margins of the paper. I drop it right now and you can see how this guide stops when the paper is finished. Or I can drop the guide, let's use another one, outside the limits of the paper. Then I drop it and here we are. So just take in mind that we have these two possibilities. One click outside, I deselect that last guide. Of course, I can select them again just with one click. I can select even more than one using the shift key and then right click this menu pops up and I find here different options. One of the most interesting options here in my opinion is lock guides. I will hit it and then these two guys are already locked. I cannot select them anymore and in case that I want to unlock them I should then right click grids and guides and I hit lock guides. We need to unlock mark lock guides. Once done it, I can then select and play with these two guys. In case that the drawing becomes a mess, we have another option. Right click, grids and guides, and we can say hide guides. And here we have the shortcut, or we can even use this option, delete all guides on a spread. One click on here and all the guides 
have been deleted. In this grids and guides menu, we have many more options. For example, snap to guides is on. It means that every geometry will snap the guides, which makes sense, right? So always on. We can place the guides in back. This is up to you. And we find here this another thing, a smart guides. Let's finish the class talking about this. Now you can see that it is on. So coming back to our drawing, if I select any geometry, for instance, this rectangle and I move it, you can see how some guides pop up time to time. Right now, a pink vertical guide pops up and that is what InDesign calls a smart guide. It is smart because that guide is marking the center of the paper. So if we drop the rectangle here, we can be sure that it is placed in the center. If I move it again, going down, then another pink guide pops up, marking this time the center, but in the vertical dimension this time, right? Let's drop the rectangle here, and now it is perfectly placed in the center of the paper in both axes. Now I will select the circle and you can check more guides popping up. This time we can see a green guide which is marking the relationship between the rectangle and the center of the circle. If I drop my circle here, then the center and this right side of the rectangle are aligned. Let's make another movement. Imagine that I want now to place this circle in the middle of the rectangle. Then I select the circle, I move it, and I look for this. Here it is, I drop it, and in a very easy and fast way, just supporting myself with the smart guides, I've been able to place the geometries in an strategical position. Time to say goodbye now, and let's jump to the next class.